Hi there, I'm going to do a quick tutorial today just on uh, a basic drawing style. Uh, what we're going to try and achieve today is how to replicate uh, this type of drawing. What it is is just a simple line drawing with uh, a block of colour that has been filtered to look somewhat like a um, ink and wash, but in colour. Um, it's it's very hacky sort of way to do these assets. Um, we start off with just some stock photography. So my um, base will be this lovely lady today. Um, a few setup things I'll go over is uh, my canvas size is a A4 at 300 DPI. So it's about 2,480 pixels by 3,508. Um, that's important, I guess, uh, for the ratio of the brush sizes I'm going to be using. So um, uh, speaking of brush sizes, we've got uh, a brush set here, uh, which is a watercolor brush set, very high definition. I'll uh, link to that in the in the um, description below, so you can uh, find them there. Uh, but I've also got a basic line tool, which is really just a round brush um, with shape dynamics, so that I could go to a point. Uh, I've uh, adjusted one of these watercolor brushes to be my main brush, and this will be just for touching up later on uh, if it requires it. And all that does is has a um, an angle jitter so that it doesn't look so uniform and uh, pen pressure on the opacity so I can do very light strokes and go to darker to do um, a shading. Okay so uh, aside from those bits I think that is all you need to know and now I'll, uh, I'll just go through the process of doing this line art and, uh, and follow on from that. Okay, so we've done the line work now. Um, I'll move away this reference photo. We'll bring that up to full opacity and just make it a bit smaller in the background. We're going to use that just to select the colors, to block out the colors in the character, and then later on as well for just some of the tonal work that we'll be doing. So I'll just leave her there and then we can block in the color. So as you saw, I didn't actually use the photo uh, for color reference. I actually picked from a pre the pre-existing image. Uh, that way we can keep consistent with these colors. Um, so I just chose a middle um, tone there uh, to do that. Uh, now, um, rather than painting in the colors, I'm going to actually just use the burn and dodge tool just to do some quick shading. Um, uh, easiest way to do that use some big stroke, uh, big brushes, uh, make sure that your protect tones are on and your exposure is relatively low because otherwise it becomes rather heavy handed. Um, I could use the photo now just to make sure that the shading I'm doing is, is appropriate but uh, it's all very much the same and as long as it sort of looks good that's the most important thing. So it's very much like the old days of airbrushing using these tools. They're actually um, photographic tools for adjusting the exposure in certain areas of the photograph, or meant to replicate that at least, the old school Photoshop.
just a bit done. I think that looks good. Okay, so from here, I've got our layer of color. Um, just going to go straight into the filter. Uh, in here, I've got my filter gallery because I'm using Photoshop CC or Creative Cloud. Uh, but any other previous version of Creative Suite would be probably down here in uh, Artistic Filter. So if we go to the filter gallery, I can go straight to watercolor. Um, and I think that's the default. Actually, I've, I've increased brush detail a bit and the textures at max as well. So uh, this is already set up how I want, but just uh, adjust that to match whatever sort of uh, brush look and feel you, you want. Go OK. And that's caused a nice effect there. Um, I can now go to my specific brush tool if I wish and touch up areas just to make them or just to clean them up a bit with the textured brush tool. Um, but that isn't really that necessary as this matches pretty well with um, that previous drawing. I'll just add a bit of a bit more lighter flesh down here. Just making sure they colour match each other nicely. And um, that's about it. I might just quickly adjust the brightness, bring that up a tad, contrast can go down a little, and just wind back the saturation a little, because it looks like with that burn tool we managed to, to saturate it just a little bit too much. So there we go. So now that we're having the colour match, we should be good. We can add in a layer just behind her. Um, go back to that custom brush tool that we created, um, maybe make it a bit bigger, and then we can just create a, a nice backing shadow here as if she's standing in front of a, some sort of screen. So I go from very light to quite opaque on the, uh, on the setting using that pressure. Um, and that should be fine because I'll, I'll go down and um, wind the opacity of that layer down to probably about 10% just so it's very subtle. Um, the only other thing, uh, the line work is probably not as dark as I'd like, so I can just increase the strength of that by just duplicating that, that line work layer. And you can see there that that's, that's made quite the difference. And it matches nicely with the previous drawing. And that's about it. That's all you need to do. Well, um, thanks for spending the time to view this, and hopefully you can be creating crap like this soon too. Ciao.